Today's 90s Linuxy shenanigans are brought to you by Squarespace. But more on that in a bit. Apparently, November is the month of Linux. At least on this channel, because today we're installing my personal first ever Linux from the year 2000. And we're doing it on this weird Soyo PC with a rather unusual processor lurking inside. Well, once we get it working. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy dredging up ancient penguins from the murky depths of Linux history, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. My love of Linux started back when I was in high school. I picked up a book on Linux at a Barnes and Noble, and it came with a CD binder full of SUSE 7.0. I remember intending to dual boot my hand-me-down compact Presario, but I accidentally overwrote the entire hard drive. I learned to love Linux the hard way which is why I was very excited to come across this binder of SUSE 7.0 install media, which I think is the exact same one that came with that book all those years ago. And we're gonna install it on a very weird computer. This delightfully early 2000s looking machine is a Soyo. That was a Taiwan based budget computer manufacturer back in the early 2000s. And this machine was about as budget as you could get. Hiding away on the Socket 370 motherboard is a VSC3 running at 550 megahertz, which was an interesting x86 contender against Intel and AMD. We'll talk a little bit more about that while we try and get this computer back into a working state. So this is a pretty nice looking case, all things considered. I mean, somebody went a little crazy with the whiteout, but other than that, quite nice. The C3 name actually comes from Cyrix 3, which is what this chip was originally called, resulting from Via's acquisition of both Cyrix and Centaur technology. It was pretty much the new version of the Win chip adapted to Socket 370. It was intended as a low power budget CPU for cheap home and office machines. According to the excellent article on the C3 at x86guide.net, the C3 didn't have any L2 cache and the FPU was clocked at half the frequency of the CPU. Unfortunately, it is missing its original power supply. Uh, usually that would be not so much of a problem, but this is a non-standard opening. Uh, the board inside, also Soyo, is just an ATX board, but we're gonna have to mount an ATX power supply in here uh, creatively. <laughs> yeah, look at that. This opening is like gigantic and there's only one screw hole at the top. I'm just gonna stick a screw in here going through the venting of this 500 watt cooler max, cool max power supply and that should be fine. All right, power supply dangling from one random screw. It's about par for the course for this channel. And this thing also needs a hard drive and normally I do some sort of janky solid state SSD adapter, but I feel like this calls for a real spinning hard drive. I have a Seagate Barracuda 80 gigabyte and yeah, this should sound quite nice and nostalgic in here. As is tradition, we'll hold it in by just a single screw. All right, we don't need the plus four on this ATX power supply. Don't need SATA connectors. All right. Okay, well in the interest of professionalism, I found a little metal bracket here to keep it from wobbling around too much. Looks great. Oh, it's so heavy. All right, well, time to find out if this masterpiece of a computer even works. Boy, I hope so. Huzzah! Oh, I guess I had Windows 90 something on here on this hard drive at one point. Why doesn't the mouse work? Well, anyway, time to install SUSE 7.0. Right after this word about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Create a fast, beautiful, and rich web experience for your business or brand using Squarespace's powerful all-in-one platform. 
it's really easy to get started. Like, say I wanted to build a website dedicated to the weird and wonderful Via C3. I could build it in just minutes with Squarespace's new Next Generation Fluid Engine, which features powerful drag and drop technology and enables you to customize every detail of your customer's experience on desktop and mobile. That's on top of optimizing for SEO, managing a mailing list, watching your analytics, and much more. So check out squarespace.com slash action retro today for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use code action retro to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, let's try to install. All right, I've set it to boot off of the CD-ROM first. Oh, she's booting all right, look at that. Oh yeah, look at this beautiful graphical installer. And the mouse works, excellent. <laughs> all right, so this is Yast 2 in our graphical installation. Oh, beautiful. All right, we'll run through this install real quick. Hopefully not run into any gotchas. All right, we are doing our IDE spinning hard drive and uh, we're just gonna do the whole thing. We will install it with almost everything. All right. <laughs> you know, for a install of Linux in the year 2000, this is incredibly easy. Okay, I think the CD-ROM drive actually just died in the middle of this install. Well, that's not right. I'm gonna retry the install with a new optical drive and a different video card. All right, well that did it. New optical drive and I put a Rage 128 video card in here and we've successfully installed. And I've put some totally appropriate RGB speakers here so we can see if the sound is working, but <laughs> look at all of these options for session type. My goodness, and there's some fun stuff in here, like after step. Let's just start with the default KDE. Go ahead and log in. Oh, oh, it's beautiful. Why is it trying to connect to stuff for the tour? Look at this beautiful desktop. Oh my goodness. KDE back then was just absolutely beautiful. Look at these glorious icons, desktop switcher. Uh, going from like Windows 95 to a desktop that looked like this really felt like the future. All right, let's see what's installed on here because there's going to be a ton. Applications. Oh, look, there's <laughs> more. We have three panes worth of applications. Tons of games. Oh, look at all of these games. There's even a built-in KMUD MUD client. That's awesome. Aha, sound card. Hey, you found it. All right. Go ahead and configure it. <laughs> oh my God, it works. We have sound. <laughs> Beautiful. Okay, let me plug this thing into the internet and see if we have network connectivity. All right, let's try pinging, ping my router. Unreachable. Okay, well, of all things, it doesn't like this network card. All right, third time's a charm. I found a random network card laying around and Sousa seems to like it. All right, let's test that puppy out. Oh yeah, it sees the router. Do you have a name server? You do. Oh, we are fully online. Awesome. All right, let's try some Netscape here. 
All right, and of course we will go to frogfind.com and there it is. Now, unfortunately, frogfind is not quite working right because somebody wrote a bot to hammer this and uh, yeah, really messed things up. This is why we can't have nice things, but yeah, frogfind's homepage still works and I will have the search back working reliably very soon. In the meantime, 68k.news should work just fine. And it does. Oh yeah, David Tennant back for the Doctor Who anniversary. Which I am excited about. Look at that. <laughs> the Doctor Donna. Alright, now that we have this fully sorted, let's check out some of the other sessions we have available, which I'm really excited for. How about FVWM95? Put us back into KDE, so I don't know if I did something wrong or what. All right, how about GNOME? Oh, when I type in here, it changes it back. Oh, you jerk. Okay. <laughs> There we go. Gnome, the desktop. <laughs> oh, I haven't seen this in a long time. All right, we don't need any Gnome hints. <laughs> Look at it. It's beautiful. Look at this bling. <laughs> oh, wow. Look up here in the little desktop view. You can see the window moving around. It's the foot. <laughs> oh. Oh, it's beautiful. All right, let's try after step. Oh my goodness. It's beautiful. Oh, look how beautiful this is. Oh man, look at that. Flipping out like that. Oh, it's so good. I love that minimization. <laughs> Just kind of twirling in and out. All right, let's, uh, let's get out of here. All right, so this is KDE2, <laughs> and already it's wonderful. Certainly takes a long time to start up. All right, well, KDE does not seem to like 640 by 480 that much. You know, I like the other KDE a little bit better. All right, I have to know what die die is. <laughs> oh my God. I can switch live. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, look how pretty enlightenment is. Now that is a futuristic looking desktop environment. Okay, so that'll do it for this foray into SUSE 7.0, the finest lizard-themed Linux to ever come out of Germany. And I know we only scratched the surface of everything that came on this 7CD bundle, but I have some plans for this machine that I think would be kind of fun, like this would probably make a pretty good retro MUD server. In any event, if you enjoy these kinds of retro Linuxy shenanigans, Make sure you subscribe to the channel because I have a lot more stuff coming up. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Alex Hoffman, Andrew Nicholson, April White, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Control Alt Reese, Daniel Hubbard, Frodo Jedi, George Rosansky, Greg Hrutke, Harris Brody, James Fryman, James Laurie, Jason Pipas, Jason Ezel, Lyle Truid, Matthew Crowall, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Cedarbaum, Scott Thompson, Tom Woodfin, and Unknown Soldier 41, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.